Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from My Heat, and um, continuing on with the Kenneth Wells um, engine build, stationary engine build, and the next uh, logical part to for me to complete, or at least that I want to start on, is the engine frame. Now, the plans um, give you two choices. You can make a sheet metal frame uh, that's described down here, or if uh, you have access to patterning and casting, you can do the cast engine frame. Fortunately for me, um, Miss Emma Ritson um, sent a casting. Uh, she had made the pattern and made up some castings, and she sent one to me. So this is what I'm working with. This casting has been mostly fettled by myself, and uh, there's a little bit more cleaning to do. You'll see that there's some stuff in the uh, and you know where there's a little bit of sand breakaway that just needs to be nibbled out there a little bit. So, but uh, we'll do that when the time comes. So really the uh, important thing here uh, from what I see is everything is really based off, the measurements are based from the face of the casting, which is right here. Now what I've done is uh, yeah, after I cleaned this up, I laid a piece of sandpaper on my surface plate and I sanded this down to get a, a, a decent reference, sort of reference flat. This is what I'm going to reference everything off of. So really what I want to do now is... Um, I want to make sure that the bo the base of the engine casting here, you see it wobbles, uh, I, I want uh, to make sure that it's square to the face, right? And there are a few ways to do that. I could just put this in a four jaw chuck, um, but I decided it would be a little bit different if you've seen the video where I made the Gingri angle plates, that's the way I want to do it. And really very, very little has to be taken off here. That uh, sh should give you an idea of how, how well of a job that Emma done. Um, on the pattern making and the casting here. Emma, you've done a great job. Uh, thank you. So um, I'm going to set this up in the Gingri uh, angle plate clamps and uh, we'll stick it on the lathe and we'll uh, shave this off. So let me uh, get you over here to the surface plate where we can set up the, uh, the clamps. So I'll see you right there. Okay, so what I have here are uh, my uh, angle plate uh, clamps are just simple pieces of uh, quarter uh, two by two by quarter inch uh, angle iron cut a couple pieces I faced them to the same length um, drilled a couple holes and uh, so that they can mount to my drive dog plate and then come over here and clamp whatever it is I want to clamp in this case I just want to clamp the uh, engine frame and I'm hoping that uh, I get all this in frame. I'm at a weird angle. I'm craning around here. So really the only thing I need to worry about when I face the bottom, you see this is um, wobbly down here because I got draft going on both ways because the parting line is right here. Um, so really the only thing I want to, when I need to worry about when I set this up in this clamp is that, uh, you know, when I face it off, I don't want it sitting at an angle like that or, or an angle like that, you know, or you know something wonky like that so I uh, uh, really all I need to do is um, make sure that this surface is perpendicular to this vertical plane or the center line well, I don't really have a center line you see it's tapered so what I'm going to use since these are face square um, I don't know if that will show up since those are face nice and square I can use that as a vertical line right hopefully that shows up so so we're going to stick the uh, casting in here. Yeah, let's see here. Tighten this up just a little bit. I want to make sure that it's not... Uh, I don't want it bottomed out down here. Okay, so let's uh, just snug this just a little bit. Said, I hope I got this in frame. All right, so I'm just going to set this up here like that, and I'm going to use, I'm going to maneuver this about until that's nice and vertical. So what I'll do is get some light behind there. Let me see here. It's actually pretty good right there. Alright, 
so I don't know how well that will show up on the camera. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to get some light behind here and and position that so that uh, uh, this face here is perpendicular to this plane here. Remember, we said that this this was square. So as long as we get this in there, we sh we should be pretty good. So let me get this situated, and I'll bring you right back in. Okay, so I fiddle farted with this a little bit, and I've got it lined up there best that I can. Very little lights coming through. I guess you can see back there, I have a light here. So, I think that's good enough to mount up on the lathe and face that off. So let me get that set up and I'll bring you right in over there. Okay, so I have the uh, dog plate or drive plate mounted to the uh, spindle. The uh, engine frame clamped in the clamps, clamps uh, attached to the drive plate. So we should be pretty good. Just got a high steel bit here. Now this is uh, out of balance and um, and might vibrate a little bit so hopefully uh, hopefully it won't be too bad of a picture uh, for you but really all I'm going to try to do is just take enough off of this so it's just cleaned up across there in other words I just all I really want to do is remove the draft so let's start I'm going to lock my carriage here Okay, yeah, it's getting pretty close. Um, I'm going to continue taking real light cuts, very, very light cuts, because this is a precarious setup. You know, it wouldn't take much to knock it off center or, or whatever. So, and it's the only casting I got, so I want to be careful. And uh, something else I want to point out now, just because I'm decided to face this off, there are 101 million ways that this could have been done. I, I could have just taken a file and filed it square to the front, right? Or I could have put it on if I had a mill, if my mill was together, I could have milled it off or, I mean, and really, I don't think it's all that super important. I just, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a tyro, I guess is the technical term. I'm a beginning uh, machinist. So I'm just trying to, um, I'm just trying to, you know, take my time and, and do the best I can. So I'll, uh, I'll bring you back in, um, when I have this faced off and, and we'll go from there. Okay, guys, I'm going to try my best to work around the camera. All right, so I faced that off. Now, I have to be honest with you. I had to go back uh, after I had had it cleaned up. I had to go back and reclamp it because this had uh, cocked a little bit and probably because these faces here aren't quite parallel. So what I ended up doing is just clamping it against the one angle plate, make sure that this face was butted uh, up against it, squared this off, and then took another pass. But now, hopefully, that uh, show up. Oops. Here, let's do it this way. You can see it's pretty square across there. Good enough, uh, close enough for government work as we like to say. All right, so um, with the, other than just a little bit of fiddling down in here, which I'll do that off camera when the time comes, it's time to uh, drill some holes. And uh, of course, you know, I'm an imperial guy. I don't have any metric stuff or very, very little metric stuff. So. Uh, what I've decided to do is um, where we see these holes here for, like, this is where the bushing goes for the crankshaft. Uh, it was uh, supposed to have been tapped M6, uh, uh, counterbore uh, 6 for about an inch deep, and, uh, you know, drill number 5. So, so this, that would have been an M6 by 1 if it was drilled 5, right? Or if you do, you know, depending on what thread. So what I've decided to do is I'm gonna, I'll drill number 3. Uh, clearance all the way through okay and then I'll counterboard a quarter inch for uh, about an inch deep okay and then I'm going to thread it a quarter 28 now I don't have a quarter 28 thread a uh, quarter 28 tap so I'm going to uh, try to pick one up tomorrow while I'm out and about and then of course you know in the top here it'll get an eighth inch hole and a little countersink for oil and the holes up here at the top I'll hold off for from when I got the block done and transfer them off of my off of the block so and then the only other thing is uh, to uh, drill the uh, the holes uh, for the mounting feet and they uh, give a spot face on them so that you got a clean place for the uh, for the nut or the bolt or whatever to to sit up here so uh, one thing that I did do after I faced it off I uh, measured out this uh, 24 millimeters right 
and kind of figured out where it come across. I don't know if you could see where it come across the uh, casting, and that's probably okay. But when I done it over here, I don't know if it shows up. It doesn't appear to be in the uh, casting or in the center of where this flywheel is going to be, right? And I think aesthetics are going to matter here. So uh, I measured this. This is about 41 millimeters. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll set my height gauge for 20 and a half millimeters, mark across there and across there, and then do my center line. So I'm going to get it all marked up, and uh, and I'll bring you back in. Okay, so I fiddled around and I adjusted. So instead of the um, center line being 24 uh, millimeters off uh, the base, uh, for me the center line, which looked, you know, put me in the center of the uh, recess for the flywheel, ended up being about 22 and a half millimeters. So uh, what I've done is I went ahead and marked and punched uh, the holes for the. Uh, for the feet, I'll drill those 964, which is clearance for uh, uh, eighth inch, and then I'll take the uh, casting out of the uh, uh, drill vise, and then there's a hole here that I'll drill through uh, number three, uh, so that it can be tapped um, quarter 28, and then I'll go ahead and bore, or you know, counter counter bore uh, a quarter inch, about an inch deep or so. So, and then I have that one marked and punched there. So I'll see you over here at the uh, drill press. Okay, so I'm going to drill these two holes 964th, uh, clearance for 8th inch. are ready to go. Uh, so now all I've got to do is uh, take the casting out of the vise and drill this through, I, I think it's number three, I'll go back and check my notes um, for a tapping size and I'll bring you right back. Okay, so I, I got the engine frame casting laying here and uh, by the way I'm trying a different uh, camera angle and uh, it looks like I go from getting in the way one way to getting in the way another. But anyway, got the engine casting uh, on the bed here, um, and this is an eighth inch bit, and then uh, I'll come back to it with a number three to tap uh, quarter 28. So let's get going. And hopefully, my little uh, freebie giant, uh, Chinese drill press drills reasonably square, I hope. I never really checked. I sort of held the uh, um, square up to it a little while ago to see how done it was. It was close. I'm uh, loaded up here. All right, tell you what, let's go ahead and go with the number three. That's not all the way through, but it's really close. I'll have to pick the aluminum out of that. Still got a view there? Okay, let's go for it. Wish me luck. MF, I screwed this up, man. I might be begging you for another uh, casting. Yeah, that's one thing I've always liked about cast aluminum is the little chips that it makes.
All right, we just broke through. Looks good on that side, doesn't it? And this side. Not too shabby. Looks pretty close to the center to me. I think that's going to work. All right, so that's tapping size for uh, for uh, quarter 28. The only other thing I'm doing, I'm going to get a quarter inch bit, and I'm just going to counter bore, you know, down to about yay here, I guess, you know, about an inch. I really, uh, well, I don't know, maybe not down that far. Um, yeah, I'm going to measure this here, and then I'll, I'll leave about a quarter inch or so for threads, and and uh, that's how far I'm going to counter bore. I'm just going to do that off uh, off camera, so I'll uh, catch you back over at the bench. Okay, guys, so the the clearance holes, the 964th clearance, clearance holes uh, are drilled through. They're good to go. The hole for the uh, crankshaft bearing is drilled and counter countersunk, um, leaving about a quarter inch or so of uh, material to tap into to create the threads. Still have a little bit of uh, cleaning up here to do. All right, so where I'm at with the engine frame is um, there's holes to be drilled up here at the top uh, for the um, inlet and, uh, and exhaust and the pivot. Uh, I'll wait until I have the block done up here. There's a hole that should be drilled here and slightly uh, countersunk here for oil. Uh, I'll wait until I have the bearing done over here. And then there's supposed to be a spot face here. And uh, I don't have a spot facing tool. Um, so I need to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I still have to order a tap. I don't have tap. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop on the uh, engine frame here until I get that material. And that might be after Christmas. So here's the, um, here's kind of where we're at with it. Here's the, uh, this is the exhaust pipe. The uh, engine uh, frame lines up quite well with the holes. It would be, uh, end up being flush with the end. And uh, so it's, it's it's coming right along so um, of course I'm getting fingerprints all over it so I think in the next video um, I don't know how long it'll be either I'll be continuing on the engine frame uh, a little more with a spot facing or I'll probably just do that off camera so probably the next thing I'll start on will be the uh, flywheel um, the crankshaft the bearing uh, and the crank pin so that'll probably be the next uh, next video so we're uh, we're getting closer uh, we're getting closer, so uh, I'm kind of excited about it, and and I'm uh, boy, I'm nervous. You know, you get close, um, you kind of slow down. I think, or you're, you're um, um, emotionally, you can because I've never built one of these. You you get all this work in it, and you go, man, what what if it doesn't run? Boy, will I be embarrassed. So anyway, um, thanks for uh, following me along in the Kenneth Wells engine series. I appreciate it, and uh, if you find this stuff interesting, uh, please consider you know, liking or uh, sharing with your friends, um, or uh, maybe even subscribe. I'd appreciate that. So um, other than that, have a blessed day.